Hello and welcome back to Space Engineers. In today's video, I'm once again taking a look at one of your designs that you recommended me on mod.io. And for today we are looking at another dropship, but this time this is a creative only dropship that could be refitted for survival mode, we would have to change a few bits and pieces about it. Yes, this features all three types of thrusters, we've got 12 rocket launchers, we've got two Gatling guns, all the cannon turret on top, we can see up to 7 different players, excluding the pilot and of course the gunner for the turret on top, and we've got folding wings, but to grab hold of one of these characters, which should be that one right there, and then bring up the HUD, I can now press number 7 to fold the wings all the way down, like so, and we can press number 8 to activate the atmospheric thrusters, and then number 6 to lock them in place. Now I have done some fiddling with this myself, I've removed one of the armory lockers on the inside, or one of the weapon lockers on the inside, and replaced it with two programmable blocks, one of them is the Savo script for the rocket launchers, all 12 of them, because otherwise when you spawn this in by default, all of them are going to fire at the same time, but with the Salvo script, they'll fire on the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 pattern on both sides together, which does work out very well for more of a consistent bombardment. And the other programmable block is for the subgrid thrusters, to allow the thrusters on the wings to function correctly with the rest of the thrusters around the ship, but as it stands, if you spawn it straight out of the box, it'll do perfectly well with how the creator has set it up. So for a quick demonstration on the rocket launchers at the front, taking over this, moving all the way around, and then left mouse button, there we go. That's simply what the Savo script does, allows for a continuous bombardment of all 12 rocket launches, it's firing in quick succession, rather than all at the same time, and will just make it a bit easier to aim at moving targets, and dealing, well, a lot of damage to a large vehicle. Anyway, stopping that, we're now going to press number 7, number 8, and then number 9. There we go, the wing's now going to fold all the way up back to their standby position. I can now press number 6 once again to lock it in place, Number 8 then to turn off the thrusters, because it's time for me to press F10, find it in the spawn menu, there it is. This thing is 2,329 small blocks, using the automatons, Warfare 1, Warfare 2, Heavy and 3, Sparks of the Future, and Signals DLC packs. What you see here at the very top here, it says it's not for survival use, and they did not have enough space for hydrogen tanks or batteries, despite the ship being all piped up and ready to support it. Down to here we've got our features that we've already talked about, so there's our 12 rocket launches, our 2 gunning guns, 1 auto cannon turret, our seven seats, our folding wings, our landing spotlights, and then it uses no mods. At the very bottom here, some very important instructions of how to operate the wings. We've already done that. So simply give this a thumbs up, move around towards the very front, have a quick look around the outside, have a tour of the interior, fly around for a bit, maybe find some space pirates, and test out all the rocket launchers. So my character can now bugger off just a little bit if I can actually select the correct one. There we go, and off he goes. And here we are for the very front of the Sky Viper. So right at the very front, what we can see is our lovely glass canopy for our pilot and co-pilot to well drive the ship around and to control the turret on top. Down below here is our spotlight to light up the area in front of us, and just below that we can make it out a magnetic plate, one or three, to turn this thing down. Moving up slightly within the our air intakes, we have some black corrugated steel blocks, surrounded by some grey steel blocks in the battered pattern, or at least I believe that is a battered pattern, could be another one, but I always get them mixed up. Then of course on the left and right hand side, there's all 12 of our rocket launchers to blast your enemies with. It would go a bit closer to the main body on the left and right hand side. There we are there, and there we are there. There's our Gatling guns for a bit more automated firepower. Then round onto the side, here we go. So next to that Gatling gun, we then got FAF. And then down to here and past our wings, which we'll come to in just a moment. There's some hydrogen thrusters for our left and right. We can just about make out the ones below us to keep us off the ground. And just over there, next to our leather blocks, we can see a lone flat atmosphere thruster to help us out on our planet. Anyway, moving across to here and take a look at our wings. I see how we're all folded up, there we go, so that's how rocket launch has been set up. Over to there is a magnet that plate, how the wings have been angled and clamped in place. And onto the side here, there we are, so that's how the hinge has been set up, it's simply a double hinge onto some steel blocks, and then that connects round and over to the main body. Moving all the way up and looking down at the wing, there we go, so we've got two atmospheric thrusters, two flat atmospheric thrusters, and a bunch of steel blocks using that lovely skin. Moving down a bit more, there we go, we see our autocan turret on top, the round pulls a bank there, and they got ourselves a landing leg, one of our smaller landing legs, to use as a cargo hook, or maybe a small vehicle hook, so you can track that along on your adventure, drop down into a war zone, or close to a war zone, deploy the vehicle, open up the ramp, let all your soldiers out, and then they can get into the vehicle, and drive it away. Just a handy thing to have, that you never know it's going to be useful, until well, it does become useful, then you wonder why you've never done it before. As for the back of this thing, here we come all the way around, so at the very top here, we've got our red and green blinking lights, we have a lovely sort of curved shape for our rear spoiler, or at least that's what we're going to call it, not too sure what the actual proper term is. And then down below here, below that little landing leg, we then got a doorway to get in and out. That button's going to open up the ramp, then behind here is going to be a doorway, 
That doorway is going to lead to an intimate room. It's going to be your small airlock. We've got ourselves a doorway to go further inside. Air vent down below there. There's not much else going on. But further into this section, here's where the bulk of your people are going to be sitting. So we've got six, three on both sides. There's your two weapon lockers on this side. Turning around over to here, we've only got one. There should be one there, but that's one I removed. Put two Prokawa blocks on here to have the Savo script. And of course, these subgrid thrusters. And towards the front there will be your dual cockpits. If actually control it and drive it around with one extra seat right here for somebody special for a look at this screen to tell you what the weather is. We'll come back to that a bit later. Come back around towards the very back here. Where do we want to go? So we'll come down first of all. There we are. So right next to our little landing leg, we've got two spotlights that can light up. We see the blinking of another red and green light on the front of that section. Put it on my light and well, the light's not going to make any difference here. So we're going to just move across to the main body. There we are with our button and the ramp. There's a bunch more hydrogen thrusters as well as a magnet that plays for our, well, the rear of the ship. There's our rocket launches. There's our lone fan amazon thrusters. Two more spies to light up below here as you would come all the way down to the ground. And there's our searchlight at the front to light up the area in front of us. Coming all the way up and looking down. There we go. So there's our well, front of the cockpit to try and sing around and control that turrets. Over to here, I will need to grab hold the other character. Bring up the HUD here. And we'll actually make sure that's unlocked. Put the wings down. There we go. Back to the free camera. So here we are with a much better look at the very top of this vehicle. We can clearly see how wings have been set up, so we'll very quickly look at this right now. So all the way down, that's simply how our hinges have been angled. And of course, the blaster edge blocks in between them. Make sure it's nice and straight going all the way across and down to the ground. Have a look at it like so. There we are. And a little look from behind. And there we are like that. In fact, we'll come down to here because we might as well do that. And there we are with the wings. Then back to the main body, here we go, we've got some iron thrusters to help move us down in space. There's your auto cannon turret for your co-pilot to go and shoot any kind of enemies coming behind you or above you. Then towards the back there, there's our blinking red and green lights. And with that, that's it for the outside of the Sky Viper. It looks bloody fantastic how it's all been set up. Kind of a shame that you can't use it in survival mode because it would be very useful to, well, use in survival mode if you have a bunch of friends who want to be dropped off to a more hostile location. And of course, using that magnetic plate at the back there to go and drop off any kind of vehicles or any kind of supplies for them on their adventure. Yes, grabbing hold my character, this character over here, that other character can just remain in that seat because it does not matter. And I suppose what I could do is now just put the wings all the way back up. There we go. And then we can just come back over to here. So what we've got to do is now walk around towards the very back of this thing and then hit that button to pull it the ramp. So around to here, pressing the button, and down it comes. And it's kind of a shame you can't just jump and or clamp yourself onto that. That'd be kind of fun to carry people on that. Yes, up this ramp. Here we go into the doorway. And then we now close it right behind us. We've got a button on this side to press it. Now close up the ramp right behind us. Sealing us inside. And of course, sealing our fate. Then turn around and open up this. Here we are where a bunch of our passengers are going to be sitting. And just sit in these seats. And discuss what's going to happen. Or well, what's not going to happen on an adventure. And of course, there's the weapon lock that we already talked about. There's of course the Savo and the subgrade thruster script, which I added on myself. In that place would have been another weapon locker, so do excuse that. But crouching and looking up, a bunch of light panels to make sure it's nice and bright inside here. Then towards the front, just closing that door very quickly, and then opening it up. There we are. Now close it right behind me, and get into this seat. So we now see in this seat and see our weather, and of course whatever set up on the other LCD screen. Popping out of this and looking towards the front. There we are. I don't know why I could just got lost there, but there we are. We now just aim towards the front, get into the front cockpit. This is for you we get from here. But this seat is only going to be for that turret on top. We can click that, and now we start blasting enemies. That's what we want to do. We spin this all the way around, shoot into that one right there. And there we go. Oop, I actually hit the tail there, so hopefully that won't make any difference when flying this thing around. Anyway, hopping out of this, take control of the other character. There we go. And now what we've got is a bunch more controls. So we're undoing the parking brakes and lifting this all the way up. We now press number 6, 7, 8, and 9, which is what I added myself, to control the wings and to activate these subgrid thrusters. So press number 7 is going to fold all the way down. There we go. Once I'm happy, we can now press number 6 to lock it in place. Then we press number 8 to activate it. Then number 9 to control the strip to activate the dampeners. So then align itself with the rest of the thrusters around the ship. If that's what you want to do. But like I said at the very start of this video, you do not need to have any of that. to be added controls for the hinges. And away you go. But for the rest of the controls, we've got our rocket launches on number 1. By using the salary script, it does look very satisfying with how they fire on that pattern. Number 2 is for your dual galling guns and the front. And of course, number three is coming through the ramp at the back there to open and close it. There we go. And with that, that's basically it for the controls and all it has to offer. So we've got to drive this thing around. Then we're going to try and find some space pirates to shoot them up to see how the guns handle it. So moving forwards, here we go. For a dropship, it's not going to be the fastest thing in the world because we want to go slow and steady. Especially if we're carrying something precious on the back there on that magnet plate. 
Yes, as you see, we are slowly creeping up to about 50 meters per second. Then letting go of that, coming to a stop, it feels a lot faster than moving forwards, which is jolly good stuff if you are charging along towards your base or your destination, but you need to stop very quickly to deploy your troops and whatever vehicle you're carrying on with you. Moving left, moving right, some nice speed with that. Moving down, can be held by gravity a little bit, so we are on the moon. And moving up, some nice speed with that. Then that's the gyroscope controls, and moving this thing around, here we go. So this thing surprisingly has a nice little control over it. We can maneuver this thing around very, very easily, but it does have a bit of weight on it. It does drag around a little bit, but it perfectly suits this size of ship and what it's trying to do. And with that, that's that for the controls, that's that for how it flies. Now what we'll do is bring up the HUD and find some space pirates. And here we go, so what I've done is found a space pirate raider. Now this thing is bloody massive. With the free camera getting a bit closer look, we can see we've got Gatling guns at the front, rocket launchers at the back, Gatling guns on the top and the bottom of this thing, around towards the back of it. Yes, there's one hell of a lot of guns on here, and I have very little hope that this Sky Viper is going to survive the encounter. But I do secretly hope that it is going to work. I did set up the turret to target the weapons first of all, but it's simply going to boil down to how many rockets the Sky Viper takes versus how many rockets this takes at the end of the day. So grab and hold my character, we are just a short distance away. I'm just going to drive all the way up to it. I'm just going to double check the turret to make sure it's going to have maximum range on it. So down there we've got 600 meters before it starts engaging with rockets and doing its secondary job of targeting turrets. So here we come very, very carefully because we want to get in range of our rockets. Hopefully see our range of their rockets. So it's going to be very interesting to see how this unfolds. Here we go, we're now 800 meters out. We're now within range. We're now going to start firing our rockets straight into there, following that little signal right there or the aiming reticle. And there goes all of our rocket launchers. This is why I absolutely love the... <laughs> this is why I absolutely love the Salvo script. It looks like we have dealt a lot of damage. That might be the killing blow already onto that poor little space pirate. If we were to stop shooting and get a little bit closer, I'm actually surprised. Although it did look like they were shooting down my missiles as we were getting closer. So it seems like they do have about 600 meters on range. But no, that's been completely split in half, which I'm absolutely amazed by. There's another space pirate made in the signal. Just going to keep driving closer and closer and closer. Get a closer look over there. There we go. The auto cannon on top has now found another turret. But it looks like it's been quickly disabled. Means it has stopped shooting. It's now going for the one below the ship. I'm going to get a bit closer, a bit further down. And hopefully that has been fully disabled as well. Moving a bit closer. And then all the way around. That was a small explosion. Should have been the turret exploding on his side. That probably was one of the rocket launchers. I can see the rocket launcher up there, that would have been the Gatling gun. And then circling all the rounds. And there we are, absolutely amazed the ship actually did it. Sure, there was a massive bombardment of missiles, which couldn't be done in survival mode unless you were to replace all those rocket launchers with reloadable rocket launchers, funnel them all up to a cargo container, and make sure you have plenty of missiles stalked. But then for a bit of fun in trade mode, the ship certainly, well, did its job. And yes, getting a bit closer over here, because I do want to see what the damage was done to this. In fact, I'm going to use the free camera, Coming all the way up to it. There we go, there's one section being completely split apart. And finding the rest of it, wherever that has gone, there it is right there. And yes, that was, well, a perfect bombardment for myself and a little job that the turret did, intercepting any missiles going towards me and disabling any turrets that I missed. So to finish off this video, because there's nothing much else to talk about with this ship, we're simply going to charge along towards this, hope we can get up to some respectable speed before slamming into it. I do think we are. Here we come all the way up to it, 30 meters per second, 40, and there we go, a light little clong. Been to a point blank to it, we might as well just use the rocket launchers and continue blasting straight into it. But as it stands, the Sky Viper is a fantastic little dropship to use in your world in creative mode if you want to have a bit of fun with it. And like I said, you could to refit this out with a bunch of stuff you need for survival mode, make it survival friendly, if that's what you want to do. So be into it, scripture below to start out and play around yourself, highly recommend you do. I'll be back with another video somewhere soon. Bye bye.